Welcome back to our Christmas content advent calendar where every single day through to the 24th of December we are bringing you a brand new video whether it's a tutorial whether it's something else photography related there's all kinds of stuff today we're diving into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how you can create a really cool double exposure effect in Photoshop it's actually really really easy to do and once you know how to do it once you know the basics of how it works you're really only limited by your own creativity to create a final result that looks really cool. So let's dive in. I've got this image here, which we're going to start off with. Now, this is of a model in Brighton. We've got a nice rainy street, nice lights in the background. One of the big things about this is you need to have a white background for this to work. So we're going to have our model cut out. She's just going to be on a white background. That should work quite well because I've used, I think this was shot at F4. So she is pretty sharp. We don't have lots of kind of soft edges to worry about. It's going to be very, very easy to cut her out. I thought I'd start at this point of the tutorial where we actually cut her out so I can show you how easy it is to do that rather than jumping in right when we've got the white background and stuff like that. Let's dive in, let's cut her out, and then let's create a really cool double exposure. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over to the layers down here and I'm just going to click on this little padlock here to actually unlock the layer. Normally I'd suggest duplicating the layer so that we're working non-destructively, but actually we're not going to do anything to this layer which is going to, going to be destructive at all, so it doesn't really matter. Now what we're going to do, we're going to come up here to the, uh, to the tools up in the top left and we are going to select the quick selection tool. Now if you don't see that, you might see the magic wand. You can left click and hold and it'll bring up a few different tools and you should see the quick selection tool there. Let's go ahead and select that and that's going to allow us to select different parts of the image. Now if you have a small icon, a small cursor like I do right now, you can hold alt on your keyboard, right click and hold and drag right and left to actually make that bigger and smaller. And you can see there's a little plus sign in that circle. Now, if we go ahead and click and drag over our subject, we're gonna start selecting her. Automatically, you can see snaps on to, uh, to where she is. But an easier way, I'm gonna press Control D to uh, deselect, an easier way to do it, and something Photoshop is actually really good at now, you can just come up to the top here with the quick selection tool selected. Up here, there's a little button that says select subject. Very, very easy. You just click that, select subject. Photoshop's gonna, gonna kind of analyze the photo, and there we go. It's made a perfect selection of our model there. Now, we can come down here to the bottom right and click Add Layer Mask. If you've seen our Add Layer Mask, if you've seen our Layer Mask video, you'll know all about Layer Masks and how awesome they are. So let's go ahead and click that, and you can see it has now just gotten rid of everything else. It's not gone but we have, we've, we've hidden it. It's all hidden with the mask. And you can see on the layer itself, we've got the image, and then we've got this layer mask here. Everything in black is hidden, and everything in white is being shown. Now, it's not perfect. If I zoom in a little bit here, which you can do with Alt, holding Alt and, and use the scroll wheel of the mouse, you can see there's a few little bits that we might wanna come in and just tidy up. Let's select our brush tool, and with black selected, and make sure you've got the layer mask selected there, so you've got these little white lines around the around the layer mask. Let's just come in and uh, and paint. I'm going to use hardness 100%. Let's just paint black onto some of the bits we don't want to show. Now that's going to that's going to remove them from the mask. Okay, I think that's a pretty good job. If I was doing this. Uh, if I was doing this for real, I might spend a little bit more time, I might soften up the brush, I might just go in and just make sure it is pretty much perfect, but I think for the tutorial this is absolutely fine. To be honest, Photoshop did a very good job as it was anyway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the layers panel down here and at the bottom we're going to select this one here which allows us to add either an adjustment layer or something like a solid colour. I'm going to click solid colour, we're going to select white as the colour and I'm gonna drag that behind so it's the bottom layer. So now we've got our subject on a white background. Very, very easy, very, very nice. Now, if you feel it looks a little bit too cut and pasty, a couple of things you can do to kind of soften this up a little bit is just double click on the layer. So on the right hand side of the layer here, we can double click, that's gonna bring up the layer stylings. We can do things like add an inner shadow just by clicking the little checkbox there and maybe a drop shadow as well. If you actually click on the drop shadow, we can change the angle. So let's pop it in coming from that way. So we've got an angle on the right and let's just bring down the opacity a little bit. I don't want this to look too, uh, too ridiculous, but I sometimes feel popping something like a drop shadow like that on 
sometimes just helps to to kind of soften up the whole effect it makes it look a little bit more a little bit more real instead of just a very obvious image put onto a white background which doesn't look so good so sometimes that can help now next we're going to bring out image that we want to use for the double exposure now this is where you can get creative you can change things up you can apply it in different ways i'm going to bring two different images in so i can show you just how easy it is to switch between things you can try different things and see what you like so i've already brought in the city image i'm also going to bring in a star sky image and as you can see as i literally just drag it into photoshop now the city image was portrait already so it fit perfectly the star sky image was landscape so i'm going to actually just turn that if i hold shift it's going to lock it to certain positions so i can get a nice easily set it to be you know perfectly aligned with the photo and i'm just going to bring it up in size i'm just going to scale that up so that it fills the whole photo. So now we've got three layers plus the white background layer as well. We've got a photo of our model. We've got a city layer here where you've got some nice sort of buildings there. And then we've got this starry sky. Now let's turn off the visibility of the starry sky. Let's just work with the city for a minute. It is literally this easy. So we're gonna select the city layer and we're gonna come up to the blending modes, click that and select screen. Now immediately, it has done what is essentially a double exposure. It, the reason it doesn't look as good as you might want it to is because it's kind of taking away things from her face and things like that. So we want to actually make sure you can still see her face and it's kind of only affecting the areas we want it to affect. Now again, this is all gonna be done with layer masks. So let's go down to the, to the bottom right and click add layer mask for our city photo layer. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You could use the paintbrush you could scale that up and you could maybe soften it up and just start painting that in. That actually doesn't look that bad at all. That's actually pretty good. But something I like to do is actually use a gradient to really get a nice soft gradual shift between our kind of our photo of our model and then the actual city photo. So let's come up here to our gradient tool. We wanna to make sure we've got a gradient going from black to white, because obviously black is gonna not show, white is gonna show. And then with our layer mask selected here, we're just gonna drag a gradient from the top here right down towards the bottom. And what that's gonna do is create this layer mask where it's going black to white, and if you actually look at the, the layer mask here, you can see the gradient black to white. So we get her face, you can see it perfectly, but then it turns into the city. Now, if you wanna then kind of mess around with that a little bit, you can then still go in with the brush and just paint a little bit over her face and just get it exactly how you want it to be. You can always press Control Z to undo anything you've done. Now we can do exactly the same thing with the starry sky photo. So let's dive back in. Let's turn the visibility back on for the starry sky photo. Let's turn it off for the city photo. Let's set the starry sky photo to screen. And then again, you can see it's created the double exposure, but we want to make sure that her face and everything else is visible. So we can just click on the layer mask for the city photo. So I've clicked on that here. Hold Alt and just click and drag it up onto the other layer. And there you go, it's immediately applied it to the top layer. Now in this situation, you can then just switch between which one you like. You can try them both, you can do whatever you like. I think for me, I think this particular photo works better with the city and the model. I think that works better, but you can try all different kinds of things. There's loads of ways you can make this look really, really cool. You definitely don't have to just use a model. You can use a landscape with a double exposure. You can use really anything. It can create some really stunning, kind of more works of art, I guess, rather than straight photos. But I think they look really, really cool. And that's really the basics of it. You're really then, like I said before, just limited by your own creativity of what you can create using this technique. Now, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. Any tips or you've ever had experience of doing this before, pop it down there as well. I love to hear about that. I love to read about people's creativity as well. So anything you've tried out in the past that's worked really well for you, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I will see you tomorrow, so make sure to subscribe because there's new content every day, every day through to the 24th, and then to be honest, after that, there'll be loads of new content as well, just forever, just forever. Make sure to give the video a like as well if you enjoyed it, that always helps me out. I will see you tomorrow, like I said, and as always, thanks for watching.